Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. One of the most commonly asked questions on the YouTube channel and the website is how do I make Reaper look the way that it is in my videos? So what I'm going to do in this video is show you some of the basics on how you can do that. How you can change the layout, how you can change the theme, how you can customize the way the theme looks and a whole lot more. So one of the beautiful things about Reaper is the fact it gives us an almost unlimited way that we can customize the whole layout to get exactly how we want it to work and look. Now there's no way I can cover all those things in this video, but what I will do is show you some of the basic things so you can customize it and tweak it. You can then dig in a lot deeper yourself and find out a lot more of the things you can do on there, but this is going to give you a good starting point on how to get things looking just a little bit more personalized. So you can see on screen I've got a normal install of Reaper 5 with the standard theme. There's nothing different about it other than I've got some icons across the top that are going to be slightly different because I've customized that. And I have covered customizing or you're making your own toolbars in a separate video which I'll link in the description below so you can check those out if you'd like to see how to do that. But one of the easiest ways to make Reaper look the way you want it to look is to install themes. Now there are tons of great looking themes from really basic alterations that take the normal version of the Reaper 5 skin and they just enhance some of the things that annoy people so they call it the nitpicky edition right the way through to complete customization to make it look like a genuine console and mixing desk you know the white tie kind of layout is amazing and if you like that kind of thing then that is fantastic especially if you have bigger monitors but there should be something out there to cater for almost every taste and if not and you want to really dig in deeper you can ultimately get in and find out how you can customize and tweak and design your own themes like i say we're going to keep it simple in this video so let's start off with by taking a look at how easy it is to download and install a theme in reaper 5. so one of the best places you'll find anything to do with reaper is the Reaper stash and as you can see we've got a whole range of different categories that we can go through and we've got the latest options all showing up on the home page and we can search through for things and we can log in and we can you know do a whole range of cool things on here but what I want to do is I want to come down to the themes option and all I'm going to do is click on themes that will then filter it out and show us all the different themes that are available now you're going to find that certain themes on you are not necessarily going to work with the latest version of Reaper because this kind of stores all of the themes, not necessarily the most up to date. So you can see the 38 pages of themes on there. So that's a whole hell of a lot of themes we can we can go through and use. I would also recommend checking out the Reaper forum because there's a section dedicated on there just to dealing with the skinning and changing the way that Reaper looks. And you'll find in development themes that you can to keep an eye on, you can follow along, you can beat the test them, you can even get involved in saying what you do and don't like things and you could shape the future of how that theme ends up looking. But for now let's keep it straightforward and simple. You can see we've got a ton of different options on here, a ton of different sort of layouts and themes that we like. So as I said we're on the default 5 nitpicky edition for example. You can easily go through now and you can browse through those and take a look at what they look like and find out notes and things like that about them. So let's just take a look at the nitpicky edition for example. We can go through, we can see some screenshots. We can find out when it was uploaded, the size, how we downloads, and any comments and things on there. So you can browse through this and find a theme that you think is going to be what you want. Alternatively, if you know the name of the theme that you're after, you can easily come into this and you can just simply type it into the search field hit the enter key and then you'll go through and you'll find it. It'll go and search through for any of the keywords that you use. So for example, we've got default Kamala 5, which is the one that I tend to use for most of my videos. And earlier videos was default Kamala 4. There's subtle differences between the two. There's a light version and a dark version. And I've got a dedicated video on how you can customize almost every aspect of default Kamala. And again, that'll link in the description below. But you can easily come into this and you can go through and find a theme that you think is going to be exactly what you want. So I've already got a default Kamala installed, so I'm going to find something different, download it, and just install it and show you how the whole process works. Okay, so I've had a little look through and I've settled upon a theme that we're going to use as the basis of this video. And we're going to use the Blackmore theme. So you can see I've just done a search through on the Reaper stash, found the files that I'm looking for. All I need to do now is hit the download Blackmore Reaper theme. That will then go and download that to my system for me. Once that's downloaded, I'm ready then to start installing it. So let's let that download and then we'll go over and take a look at how easy it is to install. So there we go. We've got the file downloaded to our desktop and we're ready to start 
to install that. Now, one of the nice things is with Reaper that over the last couple of years with the latest few revisions we've had, they've just made the whole process of installing themes a double-click thing. Now, before, you used to have a lot more hassle. You have to drop it in folders and loads of faffing about to get it where you want. But now you literally just double-click, and it'll then open that up with the style already applied. So let's just double-click that. That will then open up Reaper, and you can see that that's already applied the theme for us. So we've got the basis of exactly where we want to be. Now, some themes are easier to work with than others. I mean, Blackboard and uh, default Kamala and so on, they literally double-click, install, job done. Some other ones have a little bit more to that, and they're usually the ones that are more heavily customized, shall we say. They change the way that the layout of Reaper actually works. So you may have configuration files and things you need to load in there. So as always, read what is posted with the file that you need to download. Check out the forum. Take a look if there's a thread there, a dedicated thread that tells you exactly what the theme entails, what you have to do, and so on, and follow along with that. They're usually pretty self-explanatory, and if anybody has any problems, there's usually an answer in the forum in that thread on how to deal with it. So you've got support and help there should you need it. But there we go. We've got the beginning of our customization all ready to go. So we've applied a theme to it, we can now get stuck in and start customizing other aspects of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a project in so we can take a look at what all the different elements, the tracks, the master control panel, the mixer control panel and so on, how they all look with information on them and then we can start taking a look at how we can customize all that to get it exactly where we want it and then we'll take a look at how easy it is to create screen sets so we can have multiple different layouts for different purposes for mixing for mastering and so on that you can easily call back up with just the press of a button so let's take a look at that now okay so we've got a typical project in front of us and you can see I've color coded some of the tracks so I know exactly what's going on on a track by track basis but there's a few other things we can do. And I'm going to start off with the one question that seems to get asked the most other than what theme am I using? And that is, how do I change the position of the master mixing section and put that either fully left or fully right? So I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that right now. All you need to do is come on to the master track, right click on it, come to master track and just choose show in Docker and that will automatically dock it to the left hand side of the screen and there we go that's it that's all there is to it simple as that so the next thing I get asked quite regularly is how do you color code the media now depending upon the theme this won't always work but what you can do is you can see we've got color coded tracks but then that's great when you look at the tracks when you work on a project and you want to sort of be able to see what's going on with the actual media itself then sometimes it just makes life easier to have that color coded so all we need to do is come up to the preferences or press P on the keyboard, come down onto media and we see peaks and waveforms and you can see we've got custom colors, tint the media item waveform peaks or tint the media item background. So let's just check all the ones for the background, hit apply and you now see that they color coded alongside the actual track itself. So we've now color coded that just to make our lives a little bit easier so we can now see all the different color media sections again pretty simple but can make a big difference okay so we've color coded the media we've got the layout so the basics we want and we've got these different tracks now we can change the way that these look on both the track control panel and the mixer control panel so we can customize the look of this to exactly what we want now these are the kind of things that adjusting the track or the mixer control panel the colors and the, and the shapes and the different things like that are not going to be global they're only going to be based upon the project that you're currently working on so you can't save these as screen sets but they are a great way of being able to customize the way that your mixer or your track control panel displays different elements so for example if we come over to let's just take a look at the tracks a second and you can see I've got the rhythm master is the parent and then we've got guitar left and right and so on and the child tracks and if we look on the track control panel you can see we've got these little indents these little arrows that show us we can contract and expand to show the master track and we can show the ordinary tracks problem with that is you can't really see that well which is which you can't separate them so what we can easily do is come down choose the track right click on it and we're going to come up to set track layout and you can see we've got default and we've got mixer panel and track panel well at the moment we're on the track at uh, the mixer panel so we're going to come onto that and you can see we've got several different options again this is theme dependent some themes have one or two options some themes have a dozen options some themes can have tons and tons of options but 
Have a look at the theme you've got. All of them should give you the ability to be able to change these to some extent. So let's just say that we want to use that. And because that's a master track, we just want to put in a big meter in there. And we'll have the pan at the bottom. So we can visually see it's a different thing. So there we go. We now can immediately see that that is a different kind of track. And we could do the same thing again for the guitar lead. So we can come onto that, right click, come up and say track layout, mix a panel. And we're going to come back up and say big meter pan at the bottom. So now we can quickly and easily see visually that these tracks are parent or master tracks or buses or whatever you want to set them up to be. So again, it's a great way of being able to quickly and easily customize the layout for your particular project. And like I say, in conjunction with adjusting it and customizing it for the actual uh, the layout that you like to use with Reaper itself. So these, like I say, are they're, they're different things. One is a track. Uh, customization the other is the entire project so let's just say now you've gone through and you set up the way that you like this for your whole mixing process so we might say that we want the mixer to be at the top I'll right click on this a second and I'll just say that I don't want to show multiple rows so now I've got this laid out I want just a small section at the top that allows me to quickly scrub through audio to see what I'm doing but I want the mixer to be the main feature of this then what I can do now is I can set this up as a screen set and that's very easy to do. We can have multiple screen sets and we can just use a keyboard shortcut to quickly and easily switch between those different layouts. So let's take a look at that a moment. So to access those screen layouts, all we need to do is press Control Command E on the keyboard or alternately go to View and we'll come down and we'll say we want screen sets and layouts. What that'll do is that'll open up a dialog box and that'll show us all the screen sets that we have and the load and save keys. Now the load key is the keyboard shortcut you use to switch to that layout. And if you want to make some changes to it and quickly resave that with the edits that you've made to the layout without having to come back into this box, you can also set up a save key. As you can see, I've basically taken the same key which has added shift to it. So it means that I can, I'll know exactly when which one is associated with which layout. So all you need to do is Set the layout up the way you want it, and then simply come up to this, click in a blank spot, and click Save, and then give that a name. So we're just going to call this one Sample Layout. And we'll just say we want that to store the main window position, the tool window positions, and so on. We don't want the last focus, because that's going to be different on a project-by-project -project basis. So you can specify what is saved as the screen set. So you may only want to have the layout saved, and all the rest of the things are just left to default. So you can customize and tweak that to your heart's content and we can just hit save. You can see now we've got that in there. All we need to do is apply a keyboard shortcut to that so we can quickly do that. We can just come over to the edit shortcuts button in the right hand side of this dialog box, click on there. That'll open up the window that allows us to choose the actions. And you can see that we've got the screen set section in there. So you've got screen set load one, two, three, right the way through till 10 and the same for the save. So we can say, well, let's just click on that and we'll say for that keyboard shortcut, we want to add in and we'll say F8. So let's just add that keyboard shortcut in there. So we come down to the bottom, bring that up a little bit. So we come down, click on Add. That'll open up the dialog box. We can now just press the key we want to associate this with. So I'll just press F4. You can see that we can just now say OK. That tells us if you map to something else, do we want to override it? You can say yes or no depending upon your circumstances. I'm going to say no for now, just to sort of cancel out of this. Once you've done that, that will show the shortcut then in the keyboard section. And you can do the same if you want to for the quick save option for any of your screen sets as well. Literally click on the option that you want, click add, and do the keyboard shortcut that you want. So like I say, you can do shift and F4 if you want to. So you can see that puts that in there. You click OK, and as long as that's not associated with anything else, and you don't mind overriding it if it is, you can save that out, and then you've applied that shortcut to it. So let's just cancel out of that a second. We'll just jump back out of this. And you can see I've already set up quite a few different layers because I use a dual screen setup. I've got different ones for recording. Well, I'll use the one for the mixer panel on the one side and the other one's just the recording screen so I can see exactly what I'm doing. Great way of laying things out. So that's how easy it is to create those different sets on there. And like I said, you can easily create a multiple sets and then you can switch back and forth between them at any time that you want. Like I said, also certain different aspects of it are 
project specific while other ones are global to any different project you want to work with so that's how easy it is to start customizing things in reaper you can see we can easily apply themes we can create custom layouts we can then save that out we can customize the layout and we can really get in and customize almost every aspect of this so let's just take this one step further you can see at the bottom we've got the mixer panel and we've got this little tab that says mixer well we can start docking things in there this is called the docker and we can put other things in there so let's come out to view and take a look at some of the things we can open up so let's just say we want the effects browser we click on that that'll open up this window and you can see that's great it floats away there but we don't necessarily want that to be the case so we could easily put that into the docker area and to do that is incredibly easy all we need to do is come to the effects menu click on there and you can see we've got doc fx browser in docker click on that that now puts it into an area on the docker we can now easily reposition that if we want to just by simply dragging that over into the docker area so you can see now we can switch back and forth between the effects browser and the mixer and we can do that again if we want we can come up to view we can say well let's have the routing matrix for example click on that and you can see that is in the docker already we can undock that by right clicking and easily choose to uncheck the dock matrix window in the docker it now becomes its own dedicated floating window which we can easily reposition resize to wherever we want with it and if we want to put it back in there we can easily redock it just right click on the title bar dock matrix in the window in the docker and there we go it's back in there if we want to reposition that somewhere else we can easily grab the tab while we're holding that down you'll see we get the little box associated with it and as we move to different positions on the screen you see we start to get this blue bar that allows us to choose where we want to dock this particular element so we can easily come over to the left hand side you can see we can dock down the top we can dock it right at the top above the actual play area itself we could come over to the right hand side and dock it in there you know we've got a whole range of ways we can customize this entire layer so i can drag that and drop it in there we can now resize that out if we want to and set this up again as an alternative screen set should we we want to do that and as you can see we've got the little docking tab in the right hand side so if we wanted to we can easily come in and choose something else let's say the the browsing matrix and you can see that automatically docks that in the right hand side do the same again so let's just make sure we've got nothing selected on you go to view and we'll say let's go for the uh, let's go for the track manager so there's our track manager we can expand that out we can right click and we can say dock the track manager in the window in the docker you can see that now docks it at the bottom by default but we can easily grab that take it over and drop it on to the right hand side you can see just above the little tab we've got a little blue indicator let go we've now got another window that we've customized and set up how we want it to be so you can see that it's very easy to get in and really customize all these different aspects if we want to undock that we can just literally drag it from there drop it somewhere else we want to get rid of it completely we just right click on the tab uncheck the dock that becomes a floating window again we can now close that down and it's gone so quick and easy so reaper does give you a huge amount of customization options and we've just literally scratched the surface of what you can do well i hope you found this video useful hope it's going to give you an idea on what you can do to lay out your copy of reaper to get exactly how you want to work with it in different situations if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you have any comments questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel pop those in the comment section below and until next time happy mixing